Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I am going to be going over AC power, and this time it's for RL circuits. We already, or excuse me, RLC circuits. I already made a video for power for RL and for RC circuits. So you can link to those in the upper right hand corner of this video, but this is RLC circuits AC power. Okay, and this is the circuit we're gonna be looking at. We have a circuit that has an alternating voltage source. We have a resistor. We have a capacitor and we have an inductor and these are the values for those components of our circuit and we're going to do hopefully in the next 10 minutes the following things we're going to determine the circuit impedance we're going to determine the rms current through the circuit we're going to determine the power factor and the impedance phase angle of this circuit we are going to determine the real and the reactive power and finally of course we're going to draw the power triangle and determine the apparent power s which is consumed by that circuit so let's just get started now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the circuit impedance and this is the equation we use to calculate the circuit impedance. It is Z is equal to the square root of R squared which is the resistance. The impedance is the symbol Z and that is plus uh, the capacitive, excuse me, the inductive reactance minus the capacitive reactance squared. Look at the difference of those two. Now if you're wondering where this equation comes from, remember when we talked about uh, impedance for RL and RC and RLC circuits earlier, we had the impedance triangle. Okay, this is uh, just the Pythagorean theorem. This is Z, this is the hypotenuse of this triangle, and this was the inductive reactance, this is the capacitive reactance, this is the resistance, and we take the difference of those two, we get X and that, we have this triangle, which is our impedance triangle, and that is Z. Okay, so I just wanted to do that as a quick review in case you weren't familiar with that triangle, with that equation. And I just pulled those out of the hat somewhere. That's a little bit of explanation. Now, we don't know the capacitive reactants, and we don't know the inductive reactants. We're going to calculate those two things first. The capacitive reactants, reactants has the symbol X, and this is capacitive reactants. Z is for impedance. This is 1 divided by 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitor, capacitance of the capacitor, and that is simply 1 divided by 2 times pi times 55 hertz, because we have the frequency of our source is 55 hertz. And then the capacitance of our capacitor is 15 times 10 to the minus 6 minus 6, because it's 15 microfarads. Okay, we do all of that. We get that the capacitive reactance is equal to 193 ohms. Now, we're going to get the inductive reactance, XL, which is just 2 times pi times F times L. And that is 2 times pi times 55 hertz. Again, that's the frequency of our source and then we have a 75 micro henry that's 70 75 750 micro 10 to the minus 3 henry inductor and that means that the inductive reactance is 259 ohms okay now we can see now we have all three values our resistance is 150 we calculated the inductive and the capacitive reactance and now we can calculate the impedance for that triangle Remember, the impedance is the sum of all the uh, reactances and the resistances in our circuit. And it's added vectorially. That's why we have that triangle. And so we're just going to say that Z is equal to the square root of 150 squared plus 259 minus 193 squared. And we get that the impedance for that circle, circle for that circuit is 164 ohms. Excuse me. A little bit cold here. Okay, so that is part A. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the RMS current through the circuit. We have our impedance here, 164 ohms. We're going to get our RMS current. We're just going to use Ohm's law, V equals I times R. Now this is an AC circuit, so we'd like to take out the R and put a Z in there. The Z is the sum of all the resistances and the impedances, and we have those in this circuit. So we're going to say now that Z excuse me, the current, so the current is the RMS current is equal to the RMS voltage divided by the impedance of the circuit. I just took this equation and rearranged this equation for the current. Now we have our source voltage. This is typically taken as the max voltage, so we need the RMS voltage first because we're going to get the RMS current, we need the RMS voltage. That means the RMS voltage is equal to, the source is equal to the max, and that means the RMS is equal to the max voltage divided by the square root of two. That's how we calculate the RMS values. If we do that, we get that that's 230 volts because that's the source voltage 
divided by the square root of 2, and that equals 163 volts. That is the RMS root mean square voltage for that circuit. Now, we can find the RMS current. So we now we know the RMS and voltage, and we know the circuit in P. Now, this is 163 divided by 164. I think that's 0.99 something. I just put down 1 ampere. So we're going to take the RMS current to be 1 ampere. Excuse me, I have a little sip of tea. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, letter C here, is we're going to determine the power factor and the phase angle for the circuit. This is the angle symbol phi, that's what we use for the phase angle. This is the impedance once again, this is the values we had from the previous slides. And to calculate the power factor, we just take the cosine of the angle phi. Now we have again, if you think about your triangle here, that is R divided by Z. Okay, the cosine is uh, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is R. The hypotenuse was Z from our impedance triangle. And we get that the, um, <clears throat> the power factor is 0 0.91, or we can sometimes say 91%. Okay, that is just the um, R divided by Z. Okay, now we can take uh, that angle, that, that's the cosine of the angle, and we can take the cosine of that angle and get the angle from that, and that is going to be our phase angle, or the phase angle for this circuit is 24.5 degrees. So this is the power factor, which we got dividing by R divided by Z, and then we can find the phase angle by taking the cosine, uh, or the, arc, the inverse cosine of this value here, and we get that that angle, 24. 0.5 degrees. All right, now for uh, letter C, we're going to determine the real power and the reactive power. The real power, we often give the symbol P. P, the real power is, because uh, we talk about power, we use the RMS value, so it's the RMS voltage times the RMS current times the cosine of the phase angle. And for the reactive power, we just have Q is the symbol for the reactive power. That's the voltage RMS, current RMS times the sine of the phase angle. We can plug those values in, 163 times 1 times the cosine of 24, and we get that the real power uh, for that circuit is 190, 190, 149 watts. Now, when we calculate the reactive power, it's just 163 times 1 times the sine of 24, and we give that uh, value, the reactive power, it was 66, obviously, but it's volt ampere. We put an R there for reactive. Now, a volt ampere and a watt are the same, have the same unit, the same value. You can reduce the volt ampere to a watt. You can try that. That's interesting to do. So, because we like to do things and spread things out, you know, make different designations here, we put Q for the reactive power and it has the units volt ampere R. Okay? Okay, uh, let's see. Now we did that. And now we're going to determine the um, apparent power consumed by the circuit. We're going to draw the power triangle. Now the real power, which is P, which we got from the previous slide, we draw on the x-axis. Typically, that's kind of a reference angle there, a reference axis, excuse me. And then Q is the reactive power. We draw that on the positive y-axis. And then you can see, once again, we have a triangle. And the triangle has a hypotenuse and the hypotenuse represents the apparent power for that triangle. And this angle phi, this is the angle phi that we had from the previous slide. And um, uh, now we can calculate those values because S, once again, we have a triangle. So S is this just the Pythagorean theorem again. S is equal to the square root of P squared plus Q squared. We plug those values in. We get the square root of 149 squared plus 66 squared. We get that the apparent power is 160. Now for that apparent power, once again, we have VA. It's not the reactive, so we don't put an R next. It's the apparent power, so VA. That's also the same unit as a watt, or the VAR, the VA, and the watt are all the same. Okay? So that's how we can calculate the apparent uh, power consumed by that circuit. Now we can also uh, calculate the apparent power this way. The second way you can check it to see if it works out. You can take the RMS voltage times the RMS current. 
And you do that and you get 163 because the RMS voltage was 163 and the current, the RMS current was one. So it's the same thing, just 163. And you can see we got the same values. So that gives us pretty good confidence that we have the correct value for the apparent power. All right, now we can also do that one other way. We can just use our triangle here. Again, we have the tangent of the angle. Okay, now we're gonna use the angle and we have Q and we have P because we have those two values that we generated before. We have the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, Q is the opposite side, the adjacent side is P. Plug those values in for tangent and you get 164 divided by 149. And what angle is that? And once again, that is the angle 24 degrees. So you can see we calculated the phase angle um, two different ways. And once again, we got the same answer, 24 degrees. So once again, we're pretty sure we got that right. Okay, so hopefully that was less than 10 minutes. My voice is starting to give out already. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helped. If you did, please don't forget to do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Let's see what else you're supposed to do. Leave me a thumbs up for this video. Give me a nice positive comment. And uh, don't forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.